So yesterday, I posted a video talking about some of the latest rumors about the Tensor G5, about how it would be switching to TSMC for its production, and it would be using a 3 nanometer process. If you've not seen that video, I would say that that video is probably required reading for this one, because once again, Android Authority and one Camilla Wojciechowska. They are back again with more leaks, more information about the Tensor G5. I would highly encourage you to go click the link in the description and read their full article before this video. We're going to be working off of some things I put together here on Threads, and it's actually really uh, kind of funny because what eventually did come out yesterday that we're talking about now really lines up beautifully with a conversation that I had with uh, Mr. B. Floyd himself here. I'm not going to hold the Colts fandom against you. You know, we're both kind of struggling a little bit right now. So, like I said, we're just going to let that let that slide this time. We were talking about how Google does have a tendency to occasionally lag behind a little bit on their technical specifications. They very rarely ride the bleeding edge these days, and what we now know about the Tensor G5 from Android Authority, Camilla Wojciechowska, does line up with that history quite well. So while it's one thing to get excited that we're going from Samsung Foundry to TSMC, from 4 nanometer to 3 nanometer, again, that video is in the description, you have to pump the brakes a little bit because this is still Google and they're not going to go full bore crazy. We do have a table here which shows the different cores, basically the layout of this new processor. You can see the G3, the G4, and now the G5. So looking at that G5, we are sticking with the one ARM Cortex-X4. That is your big cluster. It's not really a cluster if it's one, right? A cluster can't be singular or one singular thing. That is your performance core. That's like the fastest, most powerful core, and they're leaving it the same. It is the same X4 as it was last year. Now, this is a little bit interesting because the brand new X925, I said chip, and that's not correct. It's a core. That was a typo there in my post. That core is an option, and it is significantly faster, so they're sticking with the X4. Nothing wrong with the X4, but there are faster cores available. For the mid, they are taking that 3X 720 and they are changing it to the newer 725 so that's good we have upgraded there and we're going from three to five so we should see some multi-core performance improvements with the tensor g5 and then for the little cluster these are your performance cores that tend to handle background tasks low power type things same exact core to the cortex a520 we're going from four down to two now this is one of those things that is a little bit strange right so in my mind i thought well if you have more of the lower power cores that's going to be better for efficiency but when i've googled and i've tried to dig into this i can't find a solid answer in fact i find some reason to think maybe it's the opposite Maybe having only two is actually going to be better. I don't exactly know. Maybe some of you are like CPU experts and you can kind of weigh in on this in the comments down below. But I will say the multi-core performance should be getting better. Not a whole lot else about this though to really like rant and rave about. As I said here, the A725 cores are also more efficient, so that might offset things if indeed it is worse to drop from four to two on your little cluster. Again, just not something we're going to really know how this is going to pan out until the thing is in our hands and we're able to properly test it. Talking about AI capabilities, Camilla does seem to think that this thing is going to be about 14% faster than last gen, so not a massive leap year over year in this AI stuff. And it's really important to keep in mind that these Snapdragon SOCs are pushing AI stuff heavily. This was in the video for the Snapdragon 8 Elite. And you've been seeing a lot of AI stuff mentioned in the trailers for new Snapdragon processors. Again, for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen AI powerhouse, fastest hexagon NPU. Like they're all chasing this stuff because we're bringing more and more of our AI tasks on device. And we've gotten to the point where things are like 
pretty crazy fast already. We've got the ability to generate imagery locally on device very, very quickly. And more and more of this stuff is going to be happening, but we need more and more AI power to bring these LLMs and so forth on device. They don't have to be sending data to a cloud to run it there. So small improvements there. Qualcomm may be making bigger improvements when it comes to that stuff. Now, in addition to the new CPU, we are also making a change in terms of the GPU, not just a change, but actually a full change in vendor. No longer are they using a Mali chip, a Mali GPU. They are actually switching to this IMG DXT4815-36, and we don't know a ton about this GPU. We do know that it supports ray tracing, which is a first for a Tensor chip, and it does support GPU virtualization. Now, virtualization is something Google has been playing with quite a bit lately. It has a faster clock speed, but it's only two cores instead of seven with the Mali. I would assume this is a faster GPU, but we really just don't know a whole lot about it. Google, like I said, they don't like to be on the bleeding edge. They like to kind of go with stuff that can target the specific things that they are doing, even if that means they're not on the bleeding edge. They just don't care about benchmarks and like high numbers and benchmark scores. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these numbers. Again, like I mentioned, though, that three nanometer process is going to be a pretty big difference maker, I think, when it comes to efficiency and your performance overall. When you go from a four nanometer to a three nanometer, the analogy that I used is you're basically taking a bunch of city streets and you are making them more densely packed so more traffic can flow around your quote unquote city. And that, of course, makes things more efficient and you can get more stuff done. Now, one more interesting thing that Camilla does mention in that article is that the actual chip itself, the die, is physically larger, despite the fact that it is using the same uh, kind of similar process to Apple's A18 chip. It is larger than the A18 chip. The ramifications of that could be quite varied. It could be that that new GPU actually needs additional space, and that's why it's larger. It could be that they're using the additional space for more surface area for heat dissipation. There's a lot of possible reasons why that's going on. Again, we just don't know, and I know that there are people watching this video that know more about this stuff than I do, so I'd love to see some people weighing in on this and kind of telling me, what do you think about all this information in general? I do think that the G5 is going to be better than the G4. Duh. It's It's got plenty of reasons to be an improvement, but if you're expecting this thing to suddenly leapfrog and be right there with the top-end Qualcomm Snapdragon chips, I think you need to pump the brakes. That's just not what Google is about. It's going to be better. But it's not going to be this insane improvement. A lot of people have said, I didn't buy the Pixel 9 because they thought the G5 was going to be so much better. Maybe it ends up being that, but I just don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be maybe a bigger jump than we've gotten G2 to G3, G3 to G4. Those were pretty small. Maybe it's a bigger jump than that, but it's not going to be this like absolute crazy radical game changer, at least not as far as I can tell. But again, I do want to hear what you guys think about this in the comments down below. And again, I do want you guys to go check out the article in the description down below because Camilla goes into some additional detail on some different things there that you might find interesting. So guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.